airway, and breathing. I got to move on on page number eight is multiple sclerosis. The way I'll have your highlight, and that's the way I want everyone you remember. Very, very important because you see every day these patients. And multiple sclerosis underline the word demyelation of the nerve neurons or the nervous system. So it's a demyelation of the nerve. And multiple sclerosis, remember, our brain is controlling our muscles. So what happened, your chemicals disbalance or neurons, you are getting the sensation are missing. And what happened in multiple sclerosis, number one, in your question, what do we need to know is demyelation of the neurons or the nervous system. Age, it starts very early age, can be from 20 to 40 years of age. And number three, wording, very important to know is remission. What is the word remission? Patient is feeling better. Excavation. Patient is acute, write down the word. If we know the wording, we answer the question. Your question is, patient is in excavation. What is the meaning is here? Patient is very sick. We got to know the wording. And questions are going to be for your patient when they are in an acute attack or acutely sick with multiple sclerosis. Everyone is okay? Excavation, very sick, acute attack. What is the precipitating factor? The meaning of precipitating factor, why does the disease get acutely sick? It doesn't go away. The muscles are weak. But why does it flares up? Why does it become bad? Is number one, changes when they are pregnant. Fatigue, very important, highlight. So when they give you a question, patient has excavation of multiple sclerosis. I will be talking about that. What do you do? Prevent your patient getting tired. What do you do that? Rest your patient, maybe your answer. You don't want them to overdo it anything because if they work hard or they're doing something more and they get tired, the disease is going to get worse. So what do you avoid your patient who has multiple sclerosis? Don't get overtired. What do you give them? Rest. Rest is important for the muscles to give them rest. Number next word, avoid them stress. A stress can cause them worsening the condition. Infection and trauma, any disease. When you get sick with an infection, you need more medication. You have pneumonia and you have diabetes. Your sugar would be running more higher. So all diseases, Affect it when you get more sick, when you have more stress in your body, trauma, any other kind of trauma, surgery, you're going, the disease is going to be affected. Very important, the next slide. Overheating and chilling. The meaning is the patient is young, and there may be a question. Patient is admitted with excavation of multiple sclerosis. Why does the patient went so much bad attack? Where did patient go last week? On the beach. Write down the word, excessive heat. What are you teaching patient here? Avoid going out too much in the heat and the cold also you prevent them is the chilling draft, cold draft. So everyone, we all know, is very important as a nurse to know prevent patient getting tired, fatigue. Very important in your answer, let the patient rest. When you're going in patient room, don't do everything in one time. Rest in between the activities. I will be going in intervention. Now, how would you go in multiple sclerosis in your questions are, number one is data collection. They get tired easily, they become weak easily. But start with, very important how you will, all that answer you will go. The spasticity of the lower extremity, number one. What is number one? When they start the disease, they feel their legs. What do they feel the word? A spasticity, their spasm. 
and they can't ambulate as normally they were ambulating. So what is the problem here? A spasticity of the lower extremity. So what is the problem here? Is ambulation. Write down the word ambulation. And second word you will go is, so one word is a spasticity where? In the lower extremity. So what is the problem here? Ambulation. Second line, vision. Their eyes are affected, the muscles, and they have diplopia. Maybe blindness can lead to. Number third one is important, is affecting the bladder and bowel. And what do they have here? They can feel and they can pee and have constipation and urinary retention. Astigmas, you can arrow with diplopia, abnormal eye movement. Number one, the leg, I said, spasticity. Number two, eyes. Number three, bowel and bladder. Go on emotional changes. With the nervous system, it affects them is emotion. Maybe they're saying emotional liability word. And what does it mean? When you talk, they start crying. That is the meaning. And depression or euphoria and depression. And the last word is slow and slow is dysphagia. So the starting from the leg, going to the eyes and affecting the bladder and affecting the emotion and at the last is swallowing problem. I have seen the patient in my experience for 20 years, lady who came in, she was 20 years old and she had the first baby. And I was the director of that place for 20 years. And when I left, when she came in, she was walking very slowly, same picture, and she would have UTI. She couldn't pee. She was peeing okay, but we tried without her. Every time, every month, she has three or four UTIs. And she ended up with the catheter. And at the last is what? She was totally bedridden. And what is the problem with the patient was here, was at the time when I was leaving, she was total bedridden. And she was totally with the G2 and totally with Foley catheter, cannot move around. So these muscle problems are a lot of your chemicals, because why? In a body, these chemicals are your acetylcholine and the other chemicals, they are giving what is the stimulation to the brain. And what happened, your brain is not getting and muscles are deteriorating. So muscular disorders are bad. And one of them is multiple sclerosis. And remember, when you will remember, every disease has little difference. Though we all will look their paralyzed problem, but remember, when we are answering, number one, everyone should know it's a very early age. How does it start spasticity of the leg? And remember, the eyes and also problem would be bladder and also constipation. And what does it lead to? Because they live on Foley catheter, UTI. And what would be eventually is going here is swallowing. First they're eating, they're slowly, but at the end by the time disease advancing, the problem comes dysphagia. So you remember, some question may be emotional liability, depression. Some question can be for swallowing. And if you're looking, all that apply, you will see the question spasticity, eyes, bladder, emotional, and also dysphagia. Just memorize like that. Intervention, and they are treated symptomatically. Treatment, number one, if they give you any question, I gave you, you guys practice that, and that's a lip and cut question. And there is a question, is patient is admitted, excavation, what do you do? Your answer is what? Bed rest. Are we clear? So excavation means they're very sick. You want to give their muscle rest. So let the patient rest. Safety, eye patch to protect the eye. And write down, whenever you have eye patch, you don't cover both eyes. What do you do? Alternate. You cover one eye for one day. Second eyes, you will do other days. Monitor for UTI. Respiratory problem because they're laying in bed. Bowel and bladder, increased fluid, fiber diet, and safety is number one for all your questions.
And what is in safety here? Patient is not emulating good. You have a loose carpet. Carpet, fitted carpet are fine. You have loose rug, rug piece. That's dangerous. Patients are going to slip. And that's number one question can be for your safety. And you have patient who's risk to fall. So remember, those safety devices, you will give them. And when they can't feed, they will go on to feeding. Next is misthenia gravis. And misthenia gravis is underlying the word, again, muscle weakness. But what muscles are affected? Underlying the word voluntary muscle. What muscles are affected? Voluntary muscles. And what is lacking here? Insufficient of acetylcholine. And what is acetylcholine is the chemical. So that's important that we know the word voluntary. Voluntary means you want to do something and you can do. Involuntary muscles, they're working their own. Voluntary muscles are affected. And what is lacking here? Acetylcholine. Now I will move on on data collection. They also feel very tired easily, fatigue word. But why do you highest pri priority here is respiratory, mm -hmm. underline that, and difficulty in breathing, difficulty keeping their eyes open, and the word is called pitosis, drooping of eyelids, their eyes are closed, dysphagia, swallowing problem, hoarse voice, they can't talk properly, the voice is coming out weak. So remember, what is in uh, misthenia gravis, one word, acetylcholine, volunteer muscle. What is the highest priority? Breathing. Second, swallowing. Third, eyes. Fourth, speech. They cannot even talk. Some question would be a very hoarse voice, slow voice, weak voice. Intervention, what do you monitor? Number one, respiratory. Status, at the spelling there, status, correct there. And what do you monitor for respiratory? What do you teach patient? Deep breathing exercise. And at there, prevent from infection. Because if they get infection and they cannot breathe, it's going to be bad. Number two, respiratory failure. Number three, suction is important to be available. Number four, swallowing problem. What is important to assess swallowing? By speech therapist. Maybe a swallowing test and prevent aspiration. What diet do you give if they have swallowing problem? Soft diet and maybe thickened liquid, remember that. Sit up during eating. And number six, conserve energy. Because the muscle get tired and rest is always good. Giving rest, conserve energy is always good. Number seven is important is your medication. Any medication you do not buy over the counter. They can react with the medication. Avoid stress, avoid getting tired. That's why you want to give them rest. Number eight, Mastenia Gravis Foundation they have and medication. Very important, we all know these three drugs are prostagmin, mastinon, and tensilon. These three drugs are important. And intervention, in your question. Patient has mastenia gravis and doctor has ordered your tensilon or mastinon. When do you give them? On time. Patient says, I feel I want to change the timing of my medication, no. Your timing, what the doctor has ordered, we do not change the timing, and give the medication 30 minutes before their meals, and you can give them with, correct the spelling, milk and crackers to prevent GI upset. Everyone need to know the drugs. These three drugs goes with Mastenia Gravis. When do we give? 30 minutes before. Data collection. And underneath, it will go here, misthenia crisis. If they give you a question, patient is admitted misthenia crisis, underline the word excavation, meaning is patient is very sick. Are we clear? And what do you do crisis? Avoid by progression of disease, and underline the word inadequate amount of medication. What does it mean? Patient is very sick. 
patient needs what? Medication. Patient needs what? More medication. What is the reason for misthenia crisis is low medication. That means they need more medication. Another reason, fatigue. Another reason, stress. Another reason, infection. Not only memorize the low medication, that means they're very sick, they need more medication. Are we clear? So whatever the doses they are, we need to increase the dose of the medication. But they didn't give you the medication, and they say patient is admitted with misthenia crisis. What could be the reason? Fatigue, maybe a stress patient went, and now he need more medication. So that is misthenia crisis. Everyone should know the word. What is misthenia crisis? need more medication. How do you prevent patient going in misthenia crisis are give them rest and prevent stress and infection. What is the data collection when patient is in crisis? The meaning is the blood pressure goes high and second line, very important, they cannot cough, they cannot swallow and they become incontinent. That means the muscles are really very weak and intervention. They need more medication. What do you increase here? Medication. Next page, we'll move on. Patient is admitted with cholinergic crisis. What is a cholinergic crisis? Are over medication. And what is cholinergic crisis means are now patient has hypotension. What is the blood pressure is here? Low. And what would be the patient is having here? Nausea and vomiting and cramping. What do you do? They have too much of medication. And what would you do? Don't give the medication. Maybe one answer. And second answer, antidote. What is the antidote is here? Atropine sulfate. So I want everyone, remember, misthenia crisis means you, they need more medication. They're very sick. What is cholinergic uh, crisis mean? They are you are giving medication, maybe is too much of medication. Now, next is we do the test for Tensilon. Tensilon, we are testing what's wrong with the patient. And a lot of time is Tensilon is medication you give by injection, and you check after 30 minutes, and you will see if in your question, positive means is, shows improvement. What does it mean? Shows muscle become improved. Muscles were weak, you gave Tensilon, muscles become strong. What does it mean? Patient need medication, patient has positive misthenia gravis. Everyone is all right. What does positive mean? Muscle are strength. Negative means no improvement. Now, if no improvement means patient is negative, patient don't need more medication, or patient does not have myasthenia crisis. I be clear. So what is the meaning here? You're giving the medication when patient comes in in crisis and doctor wants to see if they really have a crisis or if the patient really need medication or they don't need the medication. So what do they give? They give Tensilon. And when they're saying positive muscles are, that means patient need medication is positive. Negative means they don't need the medication. Everyone is okay. That is Tensilon test is done. So that covers your misthenia gravis. So everyone, what is in misthenia gravis? I want us to remember acetylcholine bud. What muscles are affected are voluntary muscle. What is the problem here? Breathing. Number one, swallowing, and their eyes, they can't even open their eyes, and they can't even talk. Are we clear? Next is GB syndrome. It's called gullion wear syndrome. Now, I want you, if you can pass this packet, somebody. Just keep passing, everyone. They have some pictures here, and that would be good. I just thought to make some copies to give you guys. And uh, let's just go on first, and at last I will glance at pictures there, is GBS. GBS is gullion bear syndrome. Ascending paralysis and immune system. What is this GBS is? Underline the word ascending paralysis. And what is the problem patient has here is 
ascending paralysis, immune system is affected. What is it affected here? Immune system. And underline the word infection. Patient has infection. And what infection? Respiratory. What infection? Patient has GI infection. Everyone write down, highlight those words, GI infection and upper respiratory infection. So it's important that we all know is the, uh, the patient with the disease is GBS disorder. Now in GBS is what is number one I want you guys to know is GBS is you have, you do have in the picture, if you will see in the last here with the GBS like this picture, if you go where it says anaphylactic reaction, anaphylactic reaction and you turn and you will see it says GBS, Gullian Bear Syndrome. And you will see risk factor, autoimmune. What I said here, autoimmune system. So underline the word immune system, everyone should know. And associated with immunization. In my package, you have the last line, immunization. Allergies with immunization. So let's highlight in the package, and I give you pictures here so you can look through and write down, let's go on on our package first. Leave that picture on the side so you guys don't miss in your package is immunization. When you will do the question I gave you, there is a question. Patient is admitted with GBS. What does the patient have? Last week, patient has immunization. And you watch TV. Every day they advertise when they're giving immunization. Monitor your patient for GBS, allergies. Immune system, not everybody. Somebody's immune system can react with that. So number one, it's immune disorder. Number two is you will go on myelin sheet is affected. And number three, infection. What infection patient has? Respiratory. What infection patient has? GI. What infection patient has? The last one, immunization. So on these pages, you have same thing here. And what is ascending paralysis, risk factor? And what is the problem patient has in GPS? Is underlying lower extremity and goes to upper extremity. So what did we say the word? Ascending paralysis. Going from where? Leg. And you have in the picture also showing in the bottom here from the legs. Are we clear? And then where does it go? It goes in the upper extremity, face they can reach. But if they ask you, what do you monitor? Even you have on the pictures package is number one, respiratory, so underline. Then you go cardiac. So what is in respiratory? Breathing problem, talking problem, swallowing problem is going up. And you can also go with bowel and bladder because it's affecting all over the body. But highest priority is what? Respiratory, cardiac. And also when you diagnose them, underline the word cerebral spinal fluid. And what is positive here? Protein. I want you to highlight the word protein level is high and that confirms the diagnosis. Intervention. What do we do in intervention is, number one, respiratory status. Initiate respiratory support, cardiac, and monitor the patients for complication. And what do you do? The treatment is here. Underline everyone that is important, we know, is IV immunoglobulin. And they can give them plasma Pharesis. And what is plasma pharesis? Removing the antibodies which help them in healing up the process. So everyone is okay. GBS is what? Ascending paralysis. Everyone remember the word immune system, infection, allergies, very important for your question. So what do you monitor patient? Maybe in your question after you give immunization, is side effect of that can be GPS. And how do you treat them? Everyone should know plasma pharesis is one IV immune globulin. Some question you're going to come across, how do you diagnose them? 
by cerebral spinal fluid, which is high in protein. Next is ALS. I want you to go on ALS. ALS is another muscle disorder, but it's also called Lou Gehrig disease. Lou Gehrig disease is cause is too much of excessive of glutamate and chemical responsible between the motor neuron. And disease is progressing and giving weakness of the muscle and underline the word flaccid quadriplegia. So everyone should know too much of glutamine. Lou Gehrig and ALS is same. And what does it affect the patient is here is uh, quadriplegia. That means upper and lower extremities are paralyzed. And what would you monitor again here? Respiratory. Underline the next word, pneumonia. And there's really not any much cure. We treat them is symptomatically. And underline is data collection. Even they're so weak that they feel very tired even when they are talking. So remember, all muscle disorder, rest is important. Prevent them from tiredness and weakness. And tongue atrophy. The tongues is more atrophy. So when they're talking, the speech is not clear, and they're talking more like the voice is coming from their nose. It's called nasal quality speech. Underline the word dysphagia, underline the word respiratory. But remember the one quadriplegia, glutamate, and then when your patient is in bed, you will go all your turning, preventing contracture, preventing pneumonia, total care, range of motion, everything we all understand. Patient cannot do, they depend on nursing care. Intervention, monitor respiratory, and assess for complication for immobility, because they're not going to move around. I will move on meningitis question. Meningitis is inflammation of the brain and the spinal cord. And what is in the brain and spinal cord caused by bacterial, fungal meningitis. Bacteria, it's also viral, and bacterial, when we say, is bad. Bacterial infection can lead to bad infection. Immediately, you need isolation. And meningitis, what isolation? We will go here, droplet. Everyone write down the word droplet on the top. And reason can be fracture, can be immune system, can be respiratory infection. Everyone should know, how do you diagnose meningitis by lumbar puncture? We are going to do lumbar puncture. We already talked about the positioning. And I want everyone is to know lumbar puncture position. And we already discussed transmission, droplet, and avoid crowded area can also cause dormitories and prison. Next page, I want you guys going into the sign and symptom are. Number one, everyone should know the word photophobia. What is the word is here? Photophobia. Knuckle rigidity, we already said earlier. And kerning sign. What is the kerning sign is, I want you to add there, is pain on leg flexion. So when you are flexing the leg, patient has a lot of pain. That is on your patient with the leg flexion. Next is you will go Bruduski sign. Bruduski sign goes with the neck. And sometimes they become very much stiff in their body that they can turn like this. And this is one of the position which is called obstetonous position. That means they can make the arch and they're going more backward when they have meningitis. So this is also one of the position you have that is his obstetonous position. And uh, I will pass this. Everyone can look the number four is the spelling. So just keep passing. And so you guys can write down the word obstetonous position. And uh, is abdominal and chest pain with viral meningitis. Knuckle rigidity. Everyone should know, add the word fever. I want, we must recognize the wording. Fever, photophobia, kerning sign, Radoski sign. Look at the number four in the bottom, that's obstetonus. Intervention, what do you do? Monitor ICP, 
all your patients, I said earlier, is seizure precaution. I underline the word isolation, and third word is if ICP goes up, then you turn your patient in what semi Fowler's position, but otherwise you can leave them. Avoid flexion, antibiotic is very important. Droplet precautions is important. And room should be quiet without any uh, stimulation. Now I will move on on trigeminal neuralgia. What is the other word is we must know, and I want you to add in your notes are, it's called tick. Delarue, T-I-C-D-O-U-L-O-U-R-E, Tick Delarue. Another name for this disease is Tick Delarue, T-I-C-D-O-U-L-O-U-R-E, Tick Delarue. Everyone should know the name because in exam, they switch around the wording. And they may not give trigeminal neuralgia. And you might get the word tic delaru. What is tic delaru? Cranial nerve 5. And where is it affecting here? Is resulting in pain, fascia. Underline the word cranial nerve 5 is affected. Where is the pain here on the face? So tic delaru word is important. Write down that word. That is trigeminal neuralgia. Now, you didn't get trigeminal and you got tic delarue, cranial nerve 5, and facial pain. Data collection. Patient has pain in the lips, the gum, and the nose, and the teeth. And how does the pain get worse? With cold, with washing the face, chewing the food and the fluid with extreme temperature. Extreme temperature, not too hot, not too cold food when you're giving. So intervention. Avoid hot and cold food in your question. Small feeding, soft food, chewing food on unaffected side. And if that didn't help, they can go surgery, which is called resiotomy, resection of the root of the nerve to relieve the pain. They can give muscle relaxants, which are baclofen and tegretorol is a seizure medication. I want you to write down on the top, Baclofen is for the muscle, and Tegretorol is a seizure medication. A lot of seizure medication can be used for nerve pain, and one of them is Tegretorol. Dilaudid is for pain. Neurontin is also for seizure and nerve pain. So remember, Neurontin is given for pain, and what pain is nerve pain. What is, uh, is trigeminal is a nerve pain. What is the pain on the face? And remember when you're giving food. Bell's palsy is affecting cranial nerve seven. What is Bell's palsy is cranial nerve seven. And what is it? It's a facial paralysis. It's again on the face, but is the muscles are more paralyzed. And Bell's palsy, cranial nerve seven, comes from infection. Maybe meningitis, maybe patient had tumor, and you will see, you will notice the paralysis of one side of the face. And when they recover, they're going to get better, it goes itself, and maybe in weak, and there's no residual. You won't see, like in stroke patient, you will always see they are paralyzed, but they are, look normal. Next is, you will go on data collection. In data collection, you have inability to raise the eyebrow and smiling and puffing out of the cheek, movement of eye when they are attempting to close the eyelid and also their problem in taste. What do you do? The muscle weakness, facial exercise. Protect the eye from dryness, prevent injury, oral care, and eat the food or chew the meal on unaffected side. We all know Parkinson patients are. In Parkinson patients are, your questions are very important that we all know is underlined the word depletion of dopamine word. And also in Parkinson is extra pyramidal symptom. And crippling disease in Parkinson. And what is in Parkinson are is uh, muscle are affected. 
result in crippling disability, they're going to become more crippled and disability is the problem. Fall, underline that. Self-care, problem. They can do things later on. Not only physically deterioration, underline the word mental deterioration. They're going down day by day. And data collection. When you know the body, bradykinesia. What is the word bradykinesia? Slow movement. Number two, they have tremor and underlying line to rigidity. If you have rigidity and tremor, you pick up the first answer, tremor, because tremor is more common, and they are shaking, a jerky movement. Third line, the face is blank face, no expression, and they will say mask-like face. What kind of face is mask-like? They're drooling, right down on the side of drooling, swallowing problem. So you got to attach your question, why, how do you take care of your patient? Safety, here, swallowing problem. Don't give more liquid, liquids are harder to swallow. Drooling, aspiration, shuffling gait, and stoop posture. They're bending like this in the front, and when they're going, they'll be like this. And how do they lift their feet? They don't lift their feet, they just go like this, like they're dragging their feet. So they're called shuffling gait. And remember, because they're bending, you want to put them in positioning prone sometime. Why? To keep them erect. What are you teaching them? Hold their back and keep the back straight to prevent them changing the posture. So this is a picture. How you will see a patient with Parkinson is what picture we have. Blank face you have and drooling, important shuffling gait. Very important, your tremors and rigidity. Intervention. What do you monitor a patient who has Parkinson? Our neurological assessment. In neurological assessment is assess swallowing. Don't rush your patient. Rock back and forth movement. When they're getting up, it's hard. Moving, moving with back and forth. Shoes, very comfortable. Risk for fall and teach them to walk and lift their feet. Mattress, firm mattress, prawn position is important. Hold their body, use their hand, and keep the back straight to prevent them in a stooping posture. Next page, we'll move on. On Parkinson, it's important that we all know the diet. Increase their calories, because they're very slow in eating, and they're not eating enough and they're losing weight. So you want to increase calories, you want to give protein, and you want to give fiber because they have risk for constipation. And small frequent feeding. And give them the fluid, 2,000 ml, because of constipation. Safety is important. Medication, anti-Parkinson medication. And when you're giving anti-Parkinson medication, are avoid Maui medication and add, avoid B6, underline B6. Why? Because effectiveness of medication is affected. So everyone highlight the word is B6 and Maui. Maui cause hypertension. I want you guys, if you pick up your page, this one you have with the drug, and I want you to highlight some drugs here for Parkinson which says on page number 686, and you have some drugs here. Read it, start knowing your drugs here. Is number one, is you have on page, page number uh, 687, and six, I think 686 and 687. So let's go where it says 687, like this page. Everyone has this page, and let's highlight the medication. Levodopa, Lardopa. Everyone is okay? Lardopa word? Highlight that. That's a Parkinson medication. Second is Levodopa and Cinnamet. Highlight that medication. Aldepro, very important drug for Parkinson. Highlight Aricept, but Aricept is not Parkinson. Highlight in the second box Alzheimer medication. And what do you monitor when you're giving Aricep? Bradycardia. 
And what is the best time to give Ericep? I want you to highlight in the evening. So Ericep, write down, all, that's not for Parkinson. Nemendia is also forgiven for memory. So Ericep and Nemendia for memory, one, two, and three are your Parkinson medication. Turn on now the page on the other side. Symmetro is another medication for your Parkinson. Loracel, baclofen is for your muscle. Artane can be given for Parkinson. Mastinon is for Mysthenia gravis. Cogentin is given for Parkinson. Coginex is for Alzheimer. So you have three drugs here for Alzheimer. Coginex you have, Aricept and Nemantia. So make sure you guys, you got to know because your questions are going to be patient is admitted and they will throw the drugs and they will say which drug are you going to give and I'll tell you it's very important this page and I gave you another one but I don't want to miss that now I will move on and what do you avoid in Parkinson medication you will go across when you're reading B6 and Maui next is stroke patient when you have stroke I showed you this picture I gave you some of this picture, but I want you autonomic dysreflexia you have. You have multiple sclerosis. Read on that, but I want you to go in the beginning where it says page number 126 and right and left CVA. And it's very clear that make sure you guys know right side what is the problem and the left side CVA, all right? So let me go on CVA. CVA, if you will see on these two pages, well, I will show you and make sure that, look, when you have right side CVA, everyone has this page, right side CVA on your pictures, make sure when you have right side, what side is affected? Left side. Everyone is okay. What is the problem in left side is, underline the word, is short attention span. Underline the word visual. Underline the word impairment. That means they cannot judge anything. And I don't feel, where is my left side? That means they don't know the weak side. Are we clear? So right side weakness, what side the weakness patient has? Left side. Everyone is okay? What is the problem here? Impairment judgment, visual, short attention span. So look through this picture. Then you go on the other picture on 127. It says left side CVA. And what side is affected here is the right side. And what is the patient is affected here? Underline the word speech, language, visual, and depression, impaired comprehension. So that means it affects all that on the body and thinking. So I'll leave this here, and I want you to highlight a few things here on stroke, all right, in our package. And let's go back on package. What is one of the reasons for stroke is hypertension. Make sure write down that. Patient has hypertension lead to a stroke. What do you monitor patient who had a stroke? Neurological defect. What does it cause in the brain? Underline the word cerebral anoxia, lack of oxygen. And if you don't get enough oxygen, it can cause irreversible damage. That means they become permanently paralyzed. Are we clear? So what does the cause is? TIA and hypertension and risk factor. Two things very important is diabetic patient. Patient who has hypertension. Patient who is taking anticoagulant therapy. They can bleed. And second line, oral contraceptive lead to bleeding disorder. Yes. And so second line, highlight that. Now, what are the few wording here I want everyone to look through? Agnosia. Unable to know the object correctly. So they don't know how to use. Apraxia. They cannot do purposeful movement. Hemi and aposia word. Vision is affected. Homo and hemi and 
both side blindness. So what is the problem here? They cannot see. What is the problem as a nurse? Make sure safety. And next is neglect syndrome. They don't know paralyzed side. I don't know which side is my weak, and they start getting up. Proprioception changes, altered position, intervention. First thing, patient had a stroke, airway, oxygen, check the blood pressure, suction. Don't suction too long for a head injury and a stroke patient because it blocks the airway and increase ICP. Quiet room environment. Why? To prevent from seizure. IV fluids, NPO may be fully catheter. After patients stabilize, now you can turn them on both sides. Two hours on an affected side and 20 minutes on the weak side, affected side. You can turn on both sides. What is the problem here? Preventing contracture. Antibolic stocking is important. Monitor for gag reflex and thickened liquid is important. When you're feeding your patient sitting in the chair, and making sure they're eating on the good side. And when they're swallowing is the best, you tell the patient, is slightly forward. They bend forward and flex and eat on the unaffected side because a lot of time they're holding the food in their mouth. So you avoid them. We already did aneurysm. We already did spinal cord injury. We already did craniotomy. So we finished that. I gave you two packages on your drug and another package also, first and second package. Your first and second and third page you have. There is another package I gave you. Make sure we talked about Valium. I want you guys just to look on this package, the other package you have. On the first page you have Valium, we talked about it. And what do you monitor for Valium? Underlined respiratory depression. The second medication we talked about, Dilantin. In the second box you have gingival hyperplasia. In the second box, the last line. Luminol is also your seizure medication. And next one, Mycelon, we are using for patient with misthenia gravis. Depakote, underline that one. Tegretorol, Neurantin, Zerantin, all these are your seizure medication. Next page is your have Lamactil, Topamax. I want, please start knowing your drugs. Gout medication, I will skip that page. But the last page, I want you to look on the back of uh, gout medication. You have some drugs, Parkinson, Artain, Cogentin, L-Dopa, Peraldol, Cinemet, and Symmetra. You guys have highlighted that. Some of the other medications you have, but these two pages will go for today's lecture. So make sure to start knowing. Without drugs, we will not know. Neurological chapter, very important for all your chapter, but this is the way you got to know all the diseases. Mesthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, ALS, a stroke patient, how we take care, and seizure patient, all those wording we talked about and do your question. So we are done for today.